Hey there, bullfrogs. Today we're going to talk about something that 21st century learners and thinkers and critical thinkers do, and that is they're continuously thinking about where their information is coming from, and they're evaluating those information sources to make sure that they are getting authoritative, relevant, current, um, unbiased information. So today that's what we're going to be talking about, how to evaluate information sources to meet your information need. So first we're going to start by taking a look at different types of information sources. So you see in front of you about six different types of sources. So I'd like for you to take a moment to just talk to your partner about how you might decide if these sources would meet your information need. So you're all researching different topics right now. So think about your topic and think about would any of these resources be good ones for you to choose to begin your research? Why or why not? And teachers, you can just click the little pause button and let the students have a little discussion to get them thinking and then we'll pick back up. Okay, so hopefully you had a little time to talk to your partners about the different information sources that you see here. Maybe you notice that um, the ones that are on the top of the screen are all electronic or digital information sources, and the ones that are on the bottom are examples of print sources. Now these aren't the only sources that um, are available when we need to gather our information. Um, these are just a couple of examples. So hopefully in your discussions you were talking about um, looking for those key words that are part of your information problem or your information need in the different information sources you see. So like for example, let's say that my issue was I wanted to research um, the issue of plastic bags in the environment. Should we use plastic bags or not? So I can look right away up here and I can see some of my key words in the titles of the articles. By green, plastic bags is highlighted. I put that in as my search term, trash and recycling. I can tell right away that this is going to be a relevant resource for me um, because it has information on my topic. Whereas if I were to go to PK um, or if I were to go to rather Pebble Go Animals, I might not be able to find any of my key words about plastic bags on that particular information resource. So you always want to be thinking about which one is going to have information that's relevant or related to uh, whatever the content or the topic is that you need to gather your information on. So I'm going to flip to my next page here and as always whenever we're trying to solve some kind of an information or inquiry problem we always follow the AGOP research process sometimes we don't need to go the whole way through it maybe we just do parts of it or maybe we do them um, not necessarily in AGOPPE order sometimes we kind of move around we start to ask questions start to gather notes and then we think of other questions we have it's kind of a fluid process as we're working through the research but the bottom line is um, we always want to start by figuring out what are our questions and those questions may develop along the process the important thing we're talking about today though is this gathering information step because it's really important before you begin to take notes that you decide if the information sources you're using are in fact valuable to your research and one thing we didn't talk about that I wanted to say on that last side was to talk about what this word evaluate means. Some of you may have, may have noticed it has part of the word value in it, which we, mean, which we know means um, if something is valuable to you, then it's um, meaningful to you, right? So it's going to work for you. It's either um, valuable or it's not valuable. So when we evaluate information sources, we're trying to figure out which of these are going to help us get to the information that we need. So let me go back. So as we're gathering our, our information and we're jotting down those sources that we're citing, 
It makes it easy for us, if we're keeping track of our sources, to figure out who the author is, the title, the publisher, or um, the organization in charge of whatever the information source is, and the copyright date. Now the reason, in addition to avoiding plagiarism, this works cited list is important, is because when we're evaluating our information sources, there are some key criteria um, that we need to keep in mind and we need to be constantly asking ourselves um, when we're gathering our information from our information sources and that is who is the author this is what we call the authority of the information resource and when we're looking at the author can we tell if this person is an expert on the topic or not we don't want to read their information if they don't really know what they're writing about or they're, they don't have, um, they're not knowledgeable on that topic. The other thing we want to think about, especially when you're researching controver controversial issues or any kind of issue, is um, does the author present the information from only one side? You want to avoid sources that are one-sided. You want to try to find information uh, resources that give you both sides of the issue. So if we go back to my example of um, should we use plastic bags, you would want to find um, information that supported yes you should use plastic bags and also um, no you shouldn't use plastic bags and why. Um, so you want to avoid those ones that only would give one side of that issue. The next thing we want to think about is the currency of the information resource. Is the information current? Always check that copyright date. Decide if that information in that information source um, on that topic may have changed recently. I always give the example of Pluto. Just a few years ago, Pluto was thought to be a planet in outer space. Um, but as scientists um, continued their research, they found out that indeed Pluto was not a planet. Um, so Miss Norris had to get rid of all of her books that said Pluto was a planet because that information was no longer current because they had made more scientific discoveries. So you always want to check the currency of the information resource. Check that copyright date. Relevancy we talked about at the beginning. Does the information source have the information that you need? You wouldn't want to go look in PebbleGo animals for um, information on whether we should use plastic bags or not because plastic bags aren't related to animal information. So you can tell if something is relevant by easily skimming and scanning those text features for the key words related to your research um, question, problem, um, information need. So while it's always important to think about each kind of information resource and if it's going to be valuable to you or not, the trickiest one to decide um, the value on is always a website. So we're going to focus on talking about tri tricks that can help you find authoritative and unbiased websites. So I've got an example of a website here now. And the first thing I want you to recognize is when you go to Google, you will notice that all of the ads or all of the links that come to the top when you do your search, which this search, I just did a simple search on plastic bags, which is not a very specific Google search, but I was very general. I've got, it looks like uh, 70 million, 900,000 um, hits here, but the ones that come all the way to the top, you may notice some of t sometimes they are in a little box up here and it says shop for plastic bags and over here it says sponsored. Um, here it says add, add. If you look closely at the ones that come to the top, if they're labeled as an advertisement, you know the purpose of that website is to usually sell you something. So always be careful about clicking on those links that are at the top of your Google search. They probably aren't going to give you um, the most unbiased information because they're looking for you to buy their product. So the biggest thing you want to be aware of when using websites is checking into who is the authority and finding out if he or she is an expert on the topic. You also want to make sure that you're avoiding 
a bias author, um, avoiding those so- sources that are only providing one side of the issue, information on one side of the issue. So always start by checking the website address or the URL. So if we take a look at the URL or website address I have right here, okay, and if you look at the what we call the subdomain, um, all websites have a subdomain. They either end in .com, .gov, .edu, or .org. If the website ends in a .com, be very careful because it's a commercially sponsored website and probably the intent is to sell you something. So you want to avoid the ones that end in .com. On the other hand, um, an author or a creator of a resource is typically an authority on the topic if they represent a government agency and end in .gov, or an educational group if they end in .edu, or a professional organization if they end in .org. So here is the website that I clicked on that just ended in .com and you can see at the top (laughs) it's made by a company called Reuse It. So while it has so-called facts about the plastic bag pandemic down here, my guess is that this information is only one-sided because they are trying to persuade you to buy their reusable um, items from their store. So they're only going to give you the bad side of the story. Okay, so be careful of those .com websites. This website, on the other hand, um, is a .org. So this is a professional organization who has created this website. Um, So we can be pretty self-assured that the information on this website is going to be authoritative and they've done their research to make sure their information is accurate. So you can see up here it's a .org in the URL. Okay, so that's all we're going to talk about today with evaluating your resources. One thing I would like for you to um, make sure you're doing as you're continuing with your research is you can keep track of whether um, your information sources are authoritative um, and current by keeping track of them on a source list like the one you see below. Okay, As you're tracking them, you can number each one of your sources. So if source number one um, happens to be a book, Okay, we know a book is a printed source. So if it's printed, we're going to follow the purple print up here to to put that information in each column. So first we start with the author's last name, comma first name, the title of the book, book is in purple, the publisher's name in this column, the year of publication so we can check that currency, the page numbers I'm using, and then I can say if it's print or if it's a web source. So if I copy down this information, I can easily um, start to think about, is this um, information resource authoritative and current? So this is another good reason to keep your works cited list handy or your source list handy because it helps you to evaluate um, the trustworthiness of that information resource you're using. So continue to do a great job on your research. I hear great things about your work. Um, Keep growing that brain, and we'll see you next time.